Good morning and welcome to Providence Presbyterian Church. We are so blessed and excited to have each and every one of you worshiping with us this morning, including those of you worshiping with us online. Thank you for being here on this beautiful day. I invite you to stand and sing with us our gathering song, When Morning Gilds the Skies. So I invite you to join with me in our prayer of confession this morning as we tell God about the things where we have erred. Please join me. You call out to us, holy God, from city streets, town squares, and even in the still of nature. But we refuse to listen, preoccupied with our projections of you, we fail to see how these thoughts disrupt our communion with each other. You offer an outstretched hand to join you in transforming our lives, but we deny such a dance with divinity is possible, choosing complacency to your counsel. Forgive us, God of love, when we ignore your unremitting call to live in the way of love.
Beloved friends, receive the good news. The risen Christ enters all corners of our lives and declares us forgiven. Having been forgiven, we take up wisdom's way of knowing, embracing it as we journey towards wholeness and peace. Thanks be to God. Please join in our song of response. Matt, let's do this twice. It's a short one. Thank you, Miss D. Thank you, choir. That was beautiful. Um, I have a couple of important announcements this morning. Um, first, we are having a congregational meeting next week, right after church. We're providing you with extra snacks, so please stay. We need to elect our nominating committee for this year, um, and we have a preacher who is willing to stay after service and be the moderator for that. Um, so please plan to stay right after service. Um, and then another important announcement is uh, I got a little excited booking a special preacher for us, and the preacher we have on the first Sunday of October can't serve communion for us because he is not part of our Presbyterian um, our Presbyterian ordination. He's from step seven, and so he is unable to serve communion. So we are doing communion the 29th of September, which is the last Sunday of this month. It's the fifth Sunday, so technically it's every four Sundays. Anyway, I'm just messing with you. But please, I know that communion is a very important part for all of you. Please know that we are moving communion from Sunday 10-6 to Sunday 929. So, and just plan for that. Um, just wanted to make you aware. I'm super excited to have Kirk come preach for us, but I wasn't paying attention to my dates when I scheduled them. So, um, please be patient with me in my uh, in my error on that one. 
Um, I'm trying to see if there are any other things. Are there any other announcements that aren't in our bulletin or that, that I've forgotten to, to mention that are important? All right. So that leads us into the time for our, our joys and concerns. This is the time in our service where we have the opportunity to come together, to share the things that are meaningful and passionate and the things that are so heartbreaking, we can barely say the words to one another. Um, I have a joy this week. I have a very old goat. She's 14 and she got very, very sick. Um, and I did not think she was going to make it, and um, I felt really bad because it was my fault. It was something I had done wrong. It wasn't that she had gotten sick or something. It was something I had done wrong, and I said, God, please don't let my error be the end of this goat's life because she's healthy and well otherwise, and God said, I hear you, and he saved my goat for me, and that was really meaningful to me because I had been having a week where I was like, God, I don't think you're here. I don't think you're listening to me. And uh, God has funny ways of going, oh, I'm here. I'm paying attention. You're just not paying attention. So um, that goat's name is Tia. And I'm very grateful that Tia is doing much better and is very well and healthy. And I'm also grateful that I work a job that made it that I could be with her when she was sick this week. So um, two, two moments of gratitude in my life. Um, that I just wanted to share with all of you. How about the rest of you? Joys, concerns, things you'd like to share with each other this week? I know that we are still praying for Christy and Darren and, and that move that is happening. And I know that's a struggle, Bonnie and Steve, and you guys have been helping with that. And so I pray that you can be a blessing to this family as they grieve not only the loss of a loved one, um, but also loss of a home, having to move from a home into assisted living right after the loss of, of her husband. I, I know that that has been a trial. So we continue to pray um, for, for that family during this time. Other joys and concerns. Karen, we're blessed you're back with us. Your surgery went well for your eye, especially because they gave all these terrible things that could happen. So we're very glad that your eye surgery went well and that you are able to be back with us. Miss D, I saw your hand go up. <laughs> it's true. It is. It is joyful to be together and to see so many of our friends, familiar faces, PT, Dave and Cindy, you've been traveling. We're blessed that you're back with us. Dolores, we're glad you made it. I know the door stymied you. You're not the only one who's been stymied by our sticky door. We're working on fixing it. Bonnie had a stern conversation with it this morning. I think it's been resolved. No, I'm teasing. But um, we are always blessed to be with each other and to see each other. We have you to turn to, and we know, God, that in you we are saved. And God, some days that can be all that we hold on to. So God, we are blessed and grateful to be your people, to be together in this place, in this time, where we can worship together, in the open, in sanctuaries. God, where we are, have the opportunity to come together, to listen to your word, and to listen to the quiet, still spaces between the words. Sometimes, God, I find that's where I find you, not in the words of others, but in the spaces between their words, where I truly listen instead of preparing for what I want to say. And so, God, we lift up those within our congregation and within our communities that we are praying for. We are grateful for the lives of the animals that bless each and every one of us. And God, especially for my sweet Tia this week, God, we pray for Christy and Darren and Bonnie and Steve during this difficult time. We pray that you would lift them up and that you would be with them and that you would help them to be a mercy and a comfort during this time of grieving. And God, we are grateful that Karen's eye surgery has gone well. 
and that she's healing well. And we're grateful for friends who have traveled and come back to us. And God, we are grateful for the opportunity to be together. So God, as, as we come together to pray, we pray for those who are weak, who are struggling. God, sometimes the people that look the strongest to us are the ones that need our prayers the most. So we pray for those that seem to be strong and those that we know to be weak, and we pray that you would lift them up. And God, we pray for those who teach us, who may not be certified teachers in the eyes of our country, God, but who give us new direction, new things to think about, new ways to think. And God, we pray that you would be with the teachers. But God, we also pray you would be with the teachers who are teaching our children. As we, as we begin a new school year, as we get into the first couple months of the school year, God, we pray that you would be with the teachers, that you would help them to touch the lives of our children, that you would help them to be comforted during difficult times, to feel joyful when they have done a successful job at something, God, and to know that you are there with them through everything. And God, we pray for our country. During this election year, God, there is so much vitriol being thrown, so much anger, frustration, and fear. And God, we pray that you would come into the hearts of the leaders of our country and that you would help them to bring unity, that you would help them to bring comfort, that you would help them to show the world here in the U.S. we can find peace with one another. But God, we also pray for peace around the world for those who are stuck in endless wars, for those who are being affected by the choices that their governments are making. God, we pray that you would be with them, that you would touch them, that you would offer them comfort and peace, that you would offer them safety and sanctuary. And God, we pray that you would be with each of us as we go to the ballot boxes this November we pray that you would touch each of us, that you would help us to know the right way to vote so that your work can be done here. And God, we pray all this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Pastor Tom is going to work the readings into his sermon this morning. They are each one sentence. So I am going to do a prayer for us before we get started with our sermon that will serve as our prayer for illumination, but we will have our, our readings through PT. So please join me in prayer. God, we pray that as we listen to Pastor Tom's sermon, that we hear the words that were said and are written in our Bibles, God, we pray that you would be with us, that you would open our hearts and our minds and our spirits to the work that you have for us, and that you would help us to know where you would like us to go today, tomorrow, this week, and into the future. In your name we pray, amen. It. It warms my heart to see the choir back. Thank you all so much. One of my favorite verses in Scripture is Romans chapter 12, verse 2, which says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect 
will. We're told here, Paul writes to the church in Rome, he says, do not conform to the world around you. He says, but what he wants us to do is to be transformed by the renewing of our minds in Christ Jesus. Today I want to look at that, that word transformed. And a word that fits pretty well with transformed is simply that's a word some of us don't like. Some of us are actually frightened of change in our life. Some more than others. I, I like some change. Some change I, I'm not too keen on. But we talk a lot about this at step seven. We have a, a mission statement that says sharing Jesus with the addicted. That's what we do at step seven. We share Jesus. We also have a, a vision statement. A vision statement is a, a preferable future. What do we see down the road? And it actually has three parts to it, and each part involves transformation or change. Our vision statement says to see men set free from their addictions and transformed into Jesus Christ. Transformed into leaders, I should say. But the, the three parts actually all involve change. To see men set free, to be transformed into leaders, and it is something that can cause a, a great deal of fear and change at step seven. These men... One of the things that's the biggest problem with addictions is just this fear of change. And in, in Scripture, some people would say that there's actually 365 times, one for every day of the year, where God tells us to fear not. Don't be anxious. Okay, to fear not. And I, uh, again, I... I come back to the fact that I think we all struggle a bit with change. Let me uh, have a quick word of prayer here. Father God, Lord, we thank you. We love you. Lord, I want to thank you for this wonderful day. I want to thank you for these friends. I want to thank you for the opportunity to hopefully give your message. So having said that, Lord, I ask that you would help me to just step aside here, and I just ask that you would, you would speak through me. And we just uh, we love you, and we pray this as we always do, in, in Jesus' name. Amen. The fear of change, my friends. And we need to know that everything changes. Everything but one thing. Okay? And that's where our, our kind of the scripture readings today. I'll go to 1 Samuel 15, which says, he who is the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind, for he is not a man that he should change his mind. Everything changes except God. And that's a very comforting thought. How would you like to serve a, a fickle God? That would be fearful. Okay. In, in Hebrews 13, it gets specific. It says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God does not change. But everything else does. Everything else does. And if you think about it, there is, there is no growth without change. Okay, there's no growth without change. And friends, if it's inevitable 
maybe it's best that we embrace it. We need to embrace change in our life. Scripture is story after story after story of transition, of, of change, of growth. And friends, that can be a little scary. It took courage for Paul, for actually Saul to become Paul, to go from persecutor to apostle. It took courage for Moses to go from being in exile to leading the Hebrew nation out of Egypt. And friends, it took, it took courage for Peter to go from denial to a pillar in the church. Change can be fearful. And when we look at this word fear, some folks in the mental health field, like psychologists or psychiatrists, they would tell us that there are basically two base emotions that we experience in our lives. One of them would be love, and the other would be fear. Those are the big emotions. And under each one of those, you have these smaller emotions, but they're all related to either love or to fear. With love, you have empathy, you have joy, you have kindness. With, with fear, you have jealousy, you have coveting, you have anger. That's a big one, especially at step seven. The men who come to step seven almost always come manifesting anger in their lives. But if you look, if you go to the root of it, it's based on fear. Think about it, especially for a guy. It's a lot more manly to be angry than it is foundation is still fear. And, and to flip the coin over, you look at the word courage. Courage is not, it's not the absence of fear. Courage is moving forward in spite of the fear. We all experience. Something that one of the verses I just love, and I've read this. I baptized five people this last weekend at our church camp out. And I've read this verse at more baptisms than you can imagine. Second Corinthians 5:17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. The old has gone, the new has come. That speaks to what? That speaks to change. We need to be made new in Christ. God changes not, but he does change everything. He remains the same. Our lives he makes all things new. And, and praise God for that. And my message today is really pretty short. I, uh, well, I think I want to, pretty famous verses here. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. We're familiar with this. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. 
I won't read them all, but a couple of them. Time to be born, time to die, time to plant, and a time to uproot, time to dance, and a time to mourn, time to scatter, not to gather. There is a season for everything. And <laughs> I always tend to relate everything back to step seven, but that's, that's where I preach. Uh, I speak to the men a lot at step seven about the seasons in our lives. Spring, summer, fall, winter. We have these seasons. And just by saying that, that means what? Change, right? And kind of the big picture, we have the seasons in our lives. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. And I want to be careful here this morning because I'm blessed to be asked to preach here. I feel like I'm part of this church. You all have treated me so well for so many years. If I think back, I can't even, it's hard for me to believe. I've been, I've been coming here for 13 years now. It's like, where does the time go? I've been preaching here. And again, I, I get back to the, the seasons in in our lives. And I just have to be honest. Everybody here, I think, can agree with me. The, the majority of us in this room, we're not a bunch of spring chickens anymore, right? Huh? We're, we're moving on in life, okay? And then when we look at the life in the big picture, we all have different identities that we hold on to. I'm a pastor. I'm a father. You know, we all have, I might be, you know, you're a mother. We all have these identities. They might relate to your job. And it's all good stuff, but we hold on to those. We identify with them. And every one of those identities also has a season that you're in. My bride passed away a few years ago. And that last year, as I took care of her, she was, my marriage was in the winter of its season. We have different seasons in all of the identities that we hold on to. I'm a grandpa. I can, I can back that one up a little bit. I might still be in the spring of being a grandpa. That's, that's a neat thing. But everything has a season. From our lives, the big picture, to the identities within those lives. They're all in a season. And life, my friends, is about transition. We transition. We transform as we move through these seasons. And the smoother we can do that, the more grace we're going to experience within our lives. I don't want my seasons to look like this. I want my life to look like this. The more gracefully we can transition through these seasons, more peace of mind we're going to experience within our lives. And this, this goes all across the board. Personal seasons, there are corporate seasons that businesses go through, 
and there are seasons within a church. And that's what I want to talk about today. My friends, I, I love you all. I love this church. And I have to tell you, I'm not up here always to make friends. I'm up here to call it like I see it. I'm worried. And I will do anything I can. I will do anything I can to help this church move forward. But we have some decisions that we need to make in this church. I've heard I've heard us be described, and rightfully so, Nancy said it a few times from up front. We are in a, a transition, and we always are. But I think what we need to do today is to make a decision. Rather than continue to consider ourselves in this transition, we need to make a decision on where we are today as far as providence is if you were to look at this room 10 years ago and compare it to today, you wouldn't have much choice but to say we are in a winter season right now. And I refuse to accept that. This is a beautiful church. This is a bunch of loving people to be a light within the community. We don't have to be in the winter of our life right now as far as this church is concerned. There's a wonderful book out there. It's called The Obstacle is the Way. We have some obstacles in front of us right now. But my friends, obstacles point to us opportunity. And we have an incredible opportunity here with the church body that we currently have. But we need to make a decision. Are we going to choose winter as our season right now? Or are we going to say no? We're going to move forward going to grow this church. We're going to be in the spring of our season. And my friends, that has to happen. We can't stick our head in the sand. We have to move forward. And that's going to take some change. We have to change. We have to get out into the community. Like I said, I'm not up here to just blow smoke. I will do anything I can to help this church make a decision that we are in the springtime of our life. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, I, I just thank you. Thank you for these friends. I thank you for this church. I thank you for all the wonderful things you've done through this church over the years, Lord. But right now, I pray, Lord. I pray that you give us guidance. I pray that you give us direction. I pray that you give us a desire within our hearts to reach out to the community so that we can grow your church, Lord. We know that you love this place. We need your help right now. We need your help. And I pray that you speak to us, Lord, in a loud voice. Leave the whispers behind. Help us to know what it is you would have us do to grow your bride, Lord. And we thank you in advance because I believe 
You tell us in Jeremiah 29 that you have a plan for us, a plan to prosper us, to give us hope in the future. And I claim that plan right now, Lord. And Lord, I pray personally for wisdom. Help me to know what it is that I can do moving forward as we fulfill your mission, Jesus. And we just thank you and we love you. And we pray this as we always do. We lift up our prayers. We lift up our petitions. We lift up our praises in that precious, precious name of our Lord and Savior. we are each blessed with talents, with gifts. Some of us are blessed with an ability to speak. Some of us are blessed with an ability to teach. Some of us are blessed with an ability to make others laugh. Some of us don't even know the talents we have that we share with others. So God, so friends, as we come here, I ask you to think about your talents. This is the time in our service when we offer what we have back to God. And so often we hear the money, we hear the needs for cash, but there is more than just a need for cash in any church, God. There is a need for each and every person's talents to stand forth and to be seen and to be utilized. And so as I call for the offering, God, I invite us to give our cash gifts because they are an important part of our society and of this place. And God, we may place them in the box in the back, but God, I also ask that we would each step up in our own way with our own talents, whatever they may be, and we may offer them to you through serving this church, this community, but also God, the greater community that we live within Please join me in prayer. God, I pray that this offering of our hearts, ourselves, our minds, our spirits, our tithes, our talents would go directly to your heart, that you would know that we are a people who are here to serve you, not just each other, God, but every person that we come across in our lives. God, in our greater community. And God, we pray that this offering would be a blessing unto you. Amen. Thank you all for giving me the opportunity to step into the pulpit here at Providence. I want to thank you for that. And 
Cassie brings up a wonderful word just there, and that word is service. We are Christians, and when we become Christians, we become servants. And we need to serve the church, my friend. So, may the Lord bless and keep you this day, this week. Let's all go forth today with a smile on our face smile that lets the world out there, the community out there, know that we've got something. And it's this relationship with Jesus Christ. So let's go forth joyful because of that. And I'm going to have one more prayer, all right? Father God, Lord, again, I just uh, lift up this church, Lord. Be with us special way. Give us guidance. Give us direction. Lord, we want to grow the kingdom through this body. and We need your direction in doing that. We will be obedient, Lord, but please speak to us in a loud voice. And again, we pray this as we always do in Christ's beautiful name. Amen. Thank you, everybody.